साधु 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 नमो बुद्धाय तेरुवन सरनाय डियर मेरिटोरियस चिल्ड्रन वंस अगेन यू हैव जॉइंड विद अनदर एपिसोड इन मिरर ऑफ दम प्रोग्राम टुडे वी आर ब्रिंगिंग यू दिस प्रोग्राम फ्रॉम अ वेरी स्पेशल एंड सेक्रेट प्लेस व्हिच इज सिचुएटेड इन आवर मदरलैंड All the way we have come to Seruvila Mangala Mahasaya to pay homage to our great teacher Supreme Buddha's Lalata Dhatu Nuhanse or frontal bond relic of our great teacher Supreme Buddha. So today I thought you uh, to take you on a wonderful and interesting pilgrimage. So before we start the pilgrimage let's pay homage to the supreme buddha so before going on the pilgrimage let's pay homage to the supreme buddha let's go for refuge to the triple gems and after observing five precepts let's go on this wonderful and interesting pilgrimage to the namo buddhaya teruvan saranai साधु 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 चिल्ड्रन से विद मी नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत समबुद्ध से नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत समबुद्ध से नमो तस् भगवत अर्हत समबुद्ध से बुद्ध शरण गच्छामी धम्म शरण गच्छामी संघं शरण गच्छामि द्वितीयं पे बुद्धं शरण गच्छामि द्वितीयं पे धम्मं शरण गच्छामि द्वितीयं पे संघं शरण गच्छामि तीयं पे बुद्ध शरण गच्छामि तीयं पे धम्म शरण गच्छामि तीयं पे संघं शरण गच्छामि साधु साधु Sadhu. To observe the five precepts, say after me. I observe the precept of abstaining from killing beings. I observe the precept of. abstaining from stealing i observe the precept of abstaining from sexual misconduct i observe the precept of abstaining from telling lies I observe the precept of abstaining from taking intoxicating drinks and drugs I follow these precepts for happiness in this life to rebirth in heaven and to realize the four noble truths 
in this Gautama Buddha's dispensation. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Children, say with me. My homage to Supreme Buddha. Buddha is my refuge every day. My homage to the Supreme Dhamma. Dhamma is my refuge every day. My homage to the Supreme Sangha. Sangha is my refuge every day. My homage to the Supreme Triple Gym. Triple Gym is my refuge every day. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Namo Buddhaya, Teruan Saranai. My dear meritorious children, today we have come to pay homage to our great teacher Supreme Buddha's frontal bone relic, Lalata Dhatun Vahansi. In this pagoda that you will that you see in the background, in the relic chamber of this pagoda, it is with great respect, it is enshrined our great teacher, Supreme Buddha's frontal bone relic, which is known as Lalata Dhatun Vahansi. Now, you will wonder what is Lalata Dhatun Vahansi is. Lalata Dhatun Vahansi means, now, in the human skull, there is a bone called frontal bone, and that is the bone where where which lies beneath our forehead, the bone that lies beneath our forehead. So, it is the forehead bone. So, that bone is known as the frontal bone and in Singhala, we call it Lalata Dhatun Vahansi. So, I, first of all, I will describe you ab about Lalata Dhatun Vahansi, how we received how Sri Lankans received this Lalata Dhatun Vahansi. Now, after the great passing away of our great teacher, Supreme Buddha, after the Mahaparinibbana, our great teacher, Supreme Buddha's holy corpse was cremated in a sandalwood pyre, in a pyre that which is made out of sandalwood. So, after the cremation, the bone relics of our great teacher Supreme Buddha was remained. Those relics remained unburned children. They did not burn and they were remained. Now, when in the descriptions about the relics of our great teacher Supreme Buddha, it says, except Several relics of our great teacher Supreme Buddha, other, all other bone relics were scattered into small pieces of different sizes. Out of all those relics, the largest bone relic which was remained as a whole part was our great teacher Supreme Buddha's frontal bone relic. That relic is known as frontal bone relic. In Singhala, we call it Lalata Dhatun Vahansi. So, that is the forehead bone of our great teacher, Supreme Buddha. Our great teacher, Supreme Buddha, had 
a splendidly high and broad and immaculate forehead. The Blessed One taught us the reason, what was the reason for gaining such a perfect forehead for our great teacher Supreme Buddha was, in whichever life, in the past lives, in whichever life our great teacher Supreme Buddha, our Maha Bodhisattva was born, he was the first and the foremost person to do the good merits, to do the merits in, the, in that lives. Our great teacher, Supreme Buddha, our Maha Bodhisattva became the leader in doing merits. He served his parents, also he encouraged others in serving and in attending their parents. He, get, he practiced the generosity more than any other person in this world and our Maha Bodhisattva encouraged other people to practice generosity. Even in the life of Prince Siddhartha, our Maha Bodhisattva practiced generosity. The life before he was being born in the Tusita heaven as Santusita, the god San Santusita, he was born as a king called Vesantara. And this Vesantara king, our Maha Bodhisattva, practiced generosity throughout his life. He gave out everything that he had. Even his, he, he, through practicing generosity, he gave even his son and daughter, he gave. So as that, our Maha Bodhisattva practiced generosity. So he became the leader in doing merits. He was the most meri meritorious person who ever lived in this world. So as a result of being uh, the leader in doing merits, our great teacher Supreme Buddha taught us, Maha Bodhisattva, Supreme Buddha received an immaculate and perfect, broad and splendid forehead as a result of that merit. So children, that born relic was remained unburned and as a whole part, as a whole bone, it, was, it wasn't scattered. So it was belonged to the sector, the relic sector of King Mallas. So our great Arahant Mahakasapa, the, the great guardian of this Gautam Buddha's dispensation, remembered that our great teacher Supreme Buddha had made a determination to belong the, the frontal bone relic to Sri Lanka. In the future, a king called Kavantisa will build a beautiful and wonderful stupa enshrining this great relic in Seruvila. So our great teacher Supreme Buddha had made a determination to belong, to give this frontal bone relic to Sri Lanka. So our great Arahant Mahakasapa remembered this, this determination, this wish. Then our great Arahant Mahakasapa went to King Mallas and asked for the great relic to hand it over to Sri Lanka. By obeying to the order of our great Arahant Mahakasapa, King Mallas handed this great relic to our great Arahant Mahakasapa. Then our great Arahant Mahakasapa handed over this great relic to his student. And the name of that great Arahant was our Mahananda Rahatan Vahansi. Mahananda Rahatan Vahansi took this great relic and he protected this great relic throughout his life. And when he was about to pass away, he handed over this great relic to his student called Chandagutta Rahatan Vahasi. And Chandagutta Rahatan Vahasi also protected this great relic throughout his life, paid homage with great respect and made offerings with great respect. And when he was about to pass away, 
he handed over this great relic to his student and that's, that great arahant was known as Bhaddaji Maharatan Mahasi. Then our great arahant Bhaddaji took this great relic, took, the, took care of this great relic, he protected this great relic. When he was about to pass away, he handed this great relic over to his student called the great arahant Jayasena Maharatan Mahasi. And Jayasena Maharatan Mahasi received this great relic and he protected this great relic, sacrificing, devoting his life with great respect. And when he was about to pass away, he handed over this great relic to his student called Sangarakita Maharatan Mahasi. So, likewise, children, this Lalata Dalton Mahasi, our great teacher Supreme Buddha's frontal born relic was descended from the hierarchy of students of great Arahant Mahakasapa. And finally, there, there lived a great Arahant called Mahadeva. Mahadeva Maharatan Mahasi, the great Arahant Mahadeva received this great relic. And he took this great relic and he brought this great relic to Sri Lanka. He was the great Arahant who brought the frontal bone relic or Lalata Datun Vahanse to Sri Lanka. So it was the time of ruling period of a king called Mahanaga in Sri Lanka. Our great Arahant Mahadeva arrived to Sri Lanka in that time. Our great Arahant arrived to a village called Hattotta, which is situated in a Ruhuna side of Sri Lanka. That means in the southern side of Sri Lanka. So, uh, our great king Mahanaga got to know about this news that a great Arahant called Mahadeva has brought our great teacher Supreme Buddha's Lalata Dhatu Nahasi or frontal bone relic to Sri Lanka. So he went to meet the great Arahant Mahadeva and asked, Venerable Sir, is it true that you have brought our great teacher Supreme Buddha's frontal bone relic to Sri Lanka? Then our great Arahant said, Your Majesty, please come with me. I will show you this great relic to you. Then our great Arahant Mahadeva showed this great relic to our great King Mahanaga. He was very happy and he was overjoyed by seeing this great relic. He fell on his knees in front of the great relic and with great enthusiasm by overjoyed with the, by seeing the great relic. He started to sing songs about our great teacher Supreme Buddha's qualities. And he fell on his knees and he paid homage with great respect. Right at that moment, children, the frontal bone relic, the Lalata Datun Mahasaya started to glow with a beautiful aura. This aura, this light spread throughout the island. So children, our great King Mahanaga paid homage with great respect and came out of that great shrine which was enshrined in our uh, great relic, the frontal bone relic. And he said to the great Arahant Mahadeva, Oh Venerable Sir, if you are happy, I would like to take care of this great relic with my life. I will devote my life to this great relic and I will take care of this. Let me uh, make offerings to this great relic by keeping this great relic with me. Then our great Arahant Mahadeva said, Your Majesty, of course, I will give you this great relic, but you have to devote your life and make offerings and take care and protect protect this great relic with your life. Then our great King Mahanaga promised to take this great relic with him and he took care of this great relic. 
he made offerings by making a beautiful shrine near his palace by enshrining this great relic and he paid homage and he protected this great relic with his life. Children, likewise this great relic was descended from King Mahanaga to his son called King Yathalathisa. Our King Yathalathisa was also, our King Yathalathisa was also a faithful king to the Triple Gems. So he took care of this great relic with great respect by devoting his life. And also, after he is about to pass away, he handed over this great relic to his son, uh, the prince called Gotabaya. Then after the King Gotabaya came to power, he took care of this great relic with great respect. And he, t he protected this great relic by making the shrines and making offerings, the, making royal offerings to this great relic. After that, when he was about to pass away, he handed over this great relic to his son called Prince Kavantissa. After, he be after Prince Kavantissa became to power, our King Kavantis was the meritorious person to build this great stupa, enshrining this frontal bone relic, Lalata Datun Vahansi, in this, in this great stupa. So, our great King Kavantis made a beautiful shrine beside his palace and he paid homage, he, he venerated this great relic with his life, devoting his life. While the time was spent, there was a great Arahant in Sri Lanka. In the time of great King Kavantissa, there lived a great Arahant called Chulla Pinda Patika Tissarahatan Vahansi. Our Chulla Pinda Patika Tissarahatan Vahansi remembered the word of our great teacher Supreme Buddha. Our great teacher Supreme Buddha had made a wish a determination that in the future a king called Kavantisa will make a beautiful stupa enshrining the great relic, the frontal bone relic or Lalata Datun Vahanse in this stupa near a pond called Varaha Sonda. And that Varaha Sonda pond is very close to a lake called Seru which is known as Seru Villa. So, children, this stupa is situated so close to a pond called Varaha Sonda. And that Varaha Sonda is uh, a pond which is made out of stone. So, in the next program, we are going to see, in the next week, we are going to see this Varaha Sonda. I am going to take you on a little journey to search the important places around this Seruvilla area. So, in the next program, you will see the Varaha Sonda Pond. So, this stupa is situated so close to Varaha Sonda Pond. So, then our great king Kavantis was very happy to hear this because he thought, my great teacher Supreme Buddha has seen me earlier when he was alive. So, he was so happy. So, he took this great relic and asked our great Arhan Chulla uh, Pinda to come with him to help to make this great stupa, to build this great stupa. When the royal procession reached uh, near to this pond called Varaha Sonde, this, the cart which carried the Supreme Buddha's great relic, the frontal bone relic, was stuck in the ground. It could not move. Then the king asked from the great Arahant, what was the reason for this? What was the reason for this? Then our great Arahant said, Your Majesty, now we have come so close to the place where the great stupa should be built. 
So then the great, then our great King Kavantisa stopped the carts and took this great relic with great respect and made a beautiful and wonderful shrine, a relic shrine near this Varaha Sonda pond. Now I will show you in the next program. Uh, there are the, there are ruins of that great shrine near that Varaha Sonda pond. And he made uh, he made a beautiful shrine near the Varaha Sonda pond and he enshrined the great relic in it. After that, he started building this great stupa in this place. So children, this place is so important. Not only the, in this stupa, there is the frontal bone relic. In this stupa, the, in this relic chamber, there are our great teacher Supreme Buddha's hair relics are enshrined in this stupa also. Before the enshrinement, before building this great stupa by King Kavantisa, the relics of the four great Buddhas who emerged in this Mahabhadra Kalpa was built in the great stupas were built in this place. So this is not only the place where our great teacher Supreme Buddha's uh, great stupa was built, but also all four great Buddhas who emerged in this Mahabhadra Kalpa, the great relics were enshrined in this place and in the past there, there was the great stupas of, uh, of all four great Buddhas in this uh, Mahabhadra Kalpa. So this is a very sacred place. This place has been the land of uh, the great stupas of all four Buddhas. So children, we have come to a special and very sacred place. So children, our great King Kavantisa started building this great stupa with, his, with great respect. Now the relic shrine of this great stupa is a cubic shape shrine children. In the four side, four sides of this uh, relic shrine, there are four golden Buddha statues. In the, in the Dhatu Ansha, it describes about the uh, the relic shrine, when, when, it, when it is describing about the relic shrine, it says there are four golden Buddha statues, same as the Buddha statue that you will see in the Buddha Gaya. There are four great Buddha statues and in the Buddha statue which is situated in the eastern side, there lies in the forehead, in the head head part of the great teacher Supreme Buddha's Buddha statue, there lies our great teacher Supreme Buddha's frontal bone relic. And it is enshrined in, in the eastern side Buddha statue. It is a golden Buddha statue. So children, there are many descriptions and wonderful descriptions about the, the great shrine of this uh, Mahastupa. So, we are so meritorious to come here and pay homage and see these great places of our great teacher Supreme Buddha. So children, this, is, this place is a sacred place for all of us. So we became meritorious to come and see and pay homage to our great teacher Supreme Buddha's Lalata Dhatun Mahase or Frontal Bone Relic. So children, now let's go near to the Mahastupa and let's pay homage and let's recollect the Supreme Buddha's qualities and let's pay homage and let's collect many merits to our life. Namo Buddhaya Teruvan Sarana.
children now we have come to the session of meditation so today we are going to meditate near our great stupa sirvila mangala mahasay so today we are going to do loving kindness meditation so get ready for the meditation sit in a relaxed position make your body straight make your body relax relax your shoulders relax your head and gently close your eyes now pay your attention to my voice today we are going to do loving kindness meditation we are going to spread our love and kindness to all beings exist in this world may i be free from anger may i be free from ill will may i be free from jealousy may i be free from physical suffering may i be free from mental suffering may i be well and happy may i live in peace may all beings around me be free from anger may they be free from ill will may they be free from jealousy may they be free from physical suffering may they be free from mental suffering may they be well and happy may they live in peace may all be in this village be free from anger be free from ill will be free from jealousy be free from physical suffering be free from mental suffering may they be well and happy may they live in peace 
may all beings in this city be free from anger be free from ill will be free from physical suffering be free from mental suffering may they be well and happy may they live in peace may all beings in this country be free from anger be free from ill will be free from jealousy be free from physical suffering be free from mental suffering may they be well and happy may they live in peace may all beings in this world be free from anger be free from ill will be free from jealousy be free from physical suffering be free from mental suffering be may they be well and happy may they live in peace may all beings be free from anger be free from ill will be free from physical suffering be free from mental suffering may they be well and happy may they live in peace may all beings live in peace may all beings live in peace live in peace live in peace sadu sadu sadu
Sadhu. Children, we have come to the session of good deeds where we watch and share all the merits and all the good deeds that has done by the children all around the world. So let's watch the good deeds that has done by the children and let's be happy and let's share all the merits with all of them. Namo Buddhaya Teruan Saranai. Namo Buddhaya. You have now come to the Good Deeds session, where we read and watch the good deeds done by children all around the world. My name is Devanga, and today I'm here with Dinu Daham. Namo Buddhaya. My name is Dinu Daham, and today I'll be watching the good deeds done by Senila Upasaka, Mevan Upasaka, Sanan Upasaka, and Chamudi Upasika from Toronto, Canada. The first meritorious deed was done by Senila Upasaka from Toronto, Canada. He has sent a marvelous presentation about Estelopoia Day, which takes place in the month of July. Today we are going to learn about why Estelopoia Day is such an important day and how we can celebrate it. Let's see his presentation. Namo Buddhaya. Estelopoia Day. What is a Poya Day? Every full moon is known as a Poya Day. Each Poya Day is different because of the events that took place on these sacred days, from the Gautama Buddha's life and all Buddhist history. One of the most well-known Poya Day is Esila Full Moon Poya Day. This day symbolizes many spectacular events that happened in Buddhist history. Hence, why many Buddhists all around the world celebrate this special day with wholesome and meritorious deeds. Significant Event 1 Asila Full Moon Poya Day is a Buddhist holiday that normally takes place in July. On this day, there were marvelous events that occurred and blossomed which became a part of Buddhist history. Prince Siddhartha was conceived in Queen Mahamaya's womb on an Asila Full Moon Poya Day. The first Dhamma sermon was preached by the Gautama Buddha on an Asila Full Moon Poya Day. The Great Wheel of Dhamma was set in motion. Arahant Kondanya became the first dream entrant in the Gautama Buddha's dispensation on an Esala Full Moon Poya Day. Significant Event 2 Prince Siddhartha decided to give up the lay life in search of the meaning of life on an Esala Full Moon Poya Day. Esala Full Moon Poya Day marks the start of the rains retreat for the Supreme Buddha and the five bhikkhus. Rahula, the son of Prince Siddhartha and Princess Yashodara, was born on an Esala full moon Poya day. The Supreme Buddha performed a supernormal power called Yamaka Mahapratiharya, emitting water and fire at the same moment from the Buddha's sacred body. Significant Event 3 The Supreme Buddha left the Dava Thimsu Divine World and returned to the human world by performing Loka Virana Pratiharya which is showing the hell realm and all the divine worlds to the people from the human world. This supernormal power took place on an Esala full moon Poya day. The first ordination of a Sri Lankan took place on an Esala full moon Poya day. The laying of the foundation of the Ruanavali Saya Stupa took place on an Esala full moon Poya day. The sacred tooth relic was brought to Sri Lanka on an Esala full moon Poya day. Meritorious Deeds these are a variety of meritorious actions you can do to celebrate the Esala Full Moon Poya Day the Buddhist way. Observe higher precepts, visit stupas, participate in Buddhist ceremonies, help others, offer dana, meditate, chant pirith. The mix of all these events is why that all Buddhists celebrate the Esala Full Moon Poya Day with gratitude and great reverence. Let us all pay our greatest respect to the Triple Gem gain much merit on this special day, and understand the Four Noble Truths in this Gautama Buddha's dispensation. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu Namo Buddhaya, Teruan Saranai Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu
Many merits to Sunny Lil Pasuka for making and sending this amazing presentation. We learned a lot about what Okoya Day is, the significant events that happened on SL Okoya Day, and the meritorious deeds we can do to celebrate SL Okoya Day. We rejoice in your merit. You can also create short 1-2 to two minute presentations about any Dhamma topic or any meritorious deed you have done. You can then send them to our email address. We can share them with the whole world and rejoice in that merit. The last meritorious deed was done by Mavin Upasika, Sinan Upasika, and Chamudi Upasika from Toronto, Canada. They have sent an informative and great presentation about Esalapoya Day. Let's see the presentation they sent. Esalapoya by Mevin, Sinan, and Chamudi. The Esalafumu Day is an important day for Buddhists. It was when the Dhamma was first preached to the five venerable monks, Venerable Kondanya, Venerable Vappa, Venerable Baddhya, Venerable Mahanama, and Venerable Asaji. All of these Arahant monks were recluses at the time. When the Lord Buddha was approaching them after reaching enlightenment, all the recluses worshipped the Lord Buddha. Soon after the Lord Buddha started preaching the Dhamma Chakam Pavatana Sutta to the five monks and many other deities. At the end of the Sutta, Kondanya Thera attained the first stage of enlightenment and became a stream enterer. Many significant events had taken place on Esla Full Moon Poya Day. Prince Siddhartha entering Queen Mahamaya's womb occurred on an Esla Full Moon Poya Day. On Esla Full Moon Poya Day, Prince Siddhartha left his palaces and clan to find true happiness. How do people celebrate Esla Full Moon Poya Day? On Esla Full Moon Poya Day, many people observe the eight precepts. Many people give dancel and collect merit. There is an Esla Pirahara which takes place in Kendi. One of the elephants in the Pirahara brings the Danta Datun Vahanse in a casket on their back. Many people, including tourists, come to watch this Pirahara. Sharing Merit We would like to share this merit with Loku Swamin Mahanse, Mirav Dhamma Swamin Mahanse, and all other monks and nuns all around the world. We would also like to share merit with the gods and brahmas, with our family, relatives, friends, teachers, Kalyana Mittas, with everyone who is suffering from coronavirus, and all other living beings around the world. May they attain the Four Noble Truths in this Gautama Buddha's dispensation. Sadhu, 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 Thiruvan Saranai, Namo Buddhaya. Sadhu, Sadhu, Sadhu. Many merits to Mevan Upasaka, Sanan Upasaka, Chamudi Upasaka for making and sending this wonderful presentation. We learned many new facts about Esla Poi Day. We learned about the first five Arahants and much more. At the end of the Sutta, Kondanya Thera attained the first stage of enlightenment and became a stream entrant. If you have any photos of any meritorious actions, you can send them to our email address which will appear on the screen. We all will rejoice in all your good deeds and we can share them with the whole world. Today we watched many good deeds done by children all around the world. May you also have the opportunity to do more meritorious deeds and to send your good deeds to our email address. These meritorious deeds will help to propagate the Dhamma and teach others to do meritorious deeds as well. We rejoice in all your good deeds. The whole world rejoices in them too. May all of us have the opportunity to realize the Four Noble Truths in the Gautama Buddha's dispensation. Sadhu, 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 Sadhu. Teruan Saranai, Namo Buddhaya. Namo Buddhaya, we have now come to the World News and the Buddha's Great Message Session where we read the news around the world 
and what lessons we can learn from these views according to the Supreme Buddha's teachings. My name is Dean and I am here with Subordha. Sometimes we hear happy news but the rest of the time we hear sad news. Why is that? This human life is a mixture of happiness and sorrow. Disasters are coming from each direction. In this endless samsara, we have to face these disasters. Today, I am going to report another volcanic eruption that happened on the Caribbean island of St. Vincent. There has been another explosive event at a volcano on the Caribbean island of St. Vincent with power outages and water supplies cut off. The La Sofria volcano first erupted on Friday, blanketing the island in a layer of ash and forcing some 16,000 people to evacuate their homes. Scientists warned that eruptions could continue for days or weeks even. Emergency officials described the landscape as a battle zone and said more damage and destruction was likely. We get to hear these disaster stories, but have you ever thought these things might happen to you? No, isn't it? We attach material things and we work day and night to achieve these material things, but these things are made from either solids, water, heat or air elements. They are not permanent. One day we have to leave these material things. So these things are not me, mine or myself. So my dear Dhamma friends, try to detach from these things. Our human life is very uncertain. Death can come to us anytime. Always try to do good things from your body, speech and mind. Namo Buddha. My name is Subodha. When God Sakka was born in the human world, his name was Mugga. He practiced seven vows, which led to become in Kavatinsa world as God Sakka. If you do good actions, just like God Sakka, by following seven vows throughout the lifetime, how peaceful would it be? And what a protection for our lives to be born among Devas and to be born among God Sakka that leads to Tavatinsa Divine World. The seven vows are taking care of his parents until he dies, taking care of elders until he dies, always use kind, pleasant words when addressing people until he dies, never break others' friendships until he dies. He thought of practicing generosity until he dies. He practiced telling the truth until he dies. Whenever anger came to his mind, he destroyed that anger the moment it came to his mind. He pushed away his anger from his mind. Today, we are going to share a meritorious deed done by someone from India. A rail worker sprung into action when a six-year-old boy fell onto the tracks in India. The child was with his partially sighted mother and was struggling to get back onto the platform before Mayor Shelke ran up and saved him. If someone protects the first precept, in other words, not killing a living being, you will have a longer lifespan. Therefore, my dear Dhamma friends, protect precepts, be virtuous. Another lesson we can learn from this news is, do not miss any opportunities that you can accumulate merits. The good done by an individual accumulates little by little. The process is very much like the filling of a water pot, drop by drop. As time goes on, the little acts of virtue accumulate until the doer of good is totally filled with it. We will see you all next week. Teruan Saranai Namo Buddhaya. Now children, we have come to the session of Paritha Shanti. So today we are going to chant Karniya Metta Sutta. That is in the page 24 of our Pali English Paritha Chanting book. So let's all together chant this Paritha today. 
sadu, sadu, sadu. Karaniya mat kusalena yantang santang padang abhisamecha sakko ujuche sujuche suacho chasse muduanatimani one skilled in good wishing to attain that state of peace nibbana shouldn't act thus he shouldn't be clever upright exceedingly upright obedient gentle and humble santosa ko cha subharo cha apakicho cha sallahu kavutti santindriyo cha nipako cha apagabho kulesu ananu giddho he shouldn't be content easy to support with few duties living lightly controlled in senses discerning cautious and unattached to families nacha khuddang samachare kinchi yena vinyu pare upavadeyum sukhino akhe mino hantu sabbe satta bhavantu sukhitatta one should not do any slight wrong which the wise might censure may all beings be happy and secure may all beings have happy minds ye ke chipan bhutati tasava thavara van vasesa dighava ye mahantava majjimaras kanukatula whatever living beings there may be without exception timid or fearless long or large medium short subtle or gross dithava yev additha ye cha dure vasanti avidure bhuta va sambhave siva sabbe satta bhavantu sukhitatta visible or invisible living near or far born or coming to birth may all beings have happy minds ne paro parang nikubetha nati manyet kat chinan kanchi byaro sena patigh sanya nanya manyas dukhamicheya let no one deceive another no despise anyone anywhere neither from anger no ill will should anyone wish harm to another mata yatani yam puttam ayusa ek putt manurakhe evam pisab bhutesu manasam bhavaye aparimanam as a mother would risk her own life to protect her only child even so towards all living beings one should cultivate boundless loving kindness mittancha sab lokasmin manasam bhavaye aparimanam uddhang adhocha tiriyancha asambadang avirang asapattang
One shouldn't cultivate for all other world a heart of boundless loving kindness above, below, and all around, unobstructed and without hatred or resentment. Titang charang nisinova sayanova yavatas vigat midho etang satin adhitteya brahma metang viharang idhamahu dittincha anupagam silava dasane na sampanno kame su vineya gedhang nahi jatu gabhaseyang punaretiti not falling into wrong views but virtuous and possessing right view removing desire for sensual pleasures one comes never again to birth in the womb etena satchena suvatti hotu by this truth may they are be well being sadhu 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 now children we have come to the final session of our mirror of dhamma program so it is the time for merit sharing so today we collected lots of merit by learning uh, the story of uh, our great teacher supreme buddha lalata dhatun vahanse and mangala mahasaya and today we collected lots of merit by paying homage to the mahastupa and today we collected lots of merits uh, by meditating chanting paritta and so on so all the merits that we collected today let's share all the merits with uh, the gods who protect the gautam buddha's dispensation may all the gods rejoice in this merit and may they be well and happy may they live long and may they protect all the children all around the world and the children who watch this mirror of dhamma program and may all the gods rejoice in this merit and may they realize four noble truths in this gautam buddha's dispensation sadhu 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 and let's share all the merits with the, all the departed relatives of all of us may all the departed relatives rejoice in this merit and may they escape from this sansara as soon as possible sadhu 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 and let's share all the merits with our pinod loku swami in vahanse and all the monks and the nuns of the mahamevnava monasteries may maha sangha rejoice in this merit and may they be well and happy may they live long and may they live a happy life and may they realize four noble truths in this gautam buddha's dispensation sadhu 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 and let's share all the merits with all of our parents and teachers may all of our parents and teachers rejoice in this merit and may they be well and happy may they live long may they live a happy life and may they realize four noble truths in this gautam buddha's dispensation sadhu 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 and finally let's share all the merits with all the children who watch this uh mirror of dhamma program today and let's share all the merits with all the children all around the world may all of you rejoice in this merit and may you be well and happy may you live long may you live a happy life may all of your education become successful and may all of your good hopes become true and may all of you rejoice in this merit and may you realize four noble truths in this gautam buddha's dispensation sadhu 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 so children we have come to the end of our mirror of dhamma program so hope you enjoy this uh, pilgrimage today we went to uh, sir vilamangala mahasaya and we paid homage to the lalata datun mahasaya 
So I promise you, in the next week, I am bringing you to the places which are very important to all of us around this uh, Seruvila Mangala Mahasaya. There are so many places to watch here and uh, be happy with them. There are so many monuments, ruins that we should watch. So in the next week, I will promise you to bring you in a little journey of searching these ancient and sacred places around this Seruvile Mangala Mahasaya. So I wish you all, may all of you rejoice in this merit today that we collected. May you be well and happy. May you live long. May you live a happy life. And may all of you realize four noble truths in this Gautam Buddha's dispensation. Namo Buddhaya Teruan Saranai.